in practice number six and seven, we are going to bring it all together. Really in number six, we're gonna see everything that we've done in this chapter sort of collide in one problem. Let me go ahead and read it. A linear model to predict the price of a particular car from its mileage was calculated from a sample of 38 cars during the week of January 2011. During the week of January 2011? Okay, using Kelly Blue Book, maybe during the month of January 2011. Um, all right, if you're familiar with Kelly Blue Book, very reliable source for used cars online. The resulting regression equation and correlation coefficient were, okay, so here they give us they don't give us the raw data. They give us the linear regression equation, y equals 24,356.15 minus 0.107x. And they give us the correlation coefficient, uh, little r, equals negative 0.679. Okay, just a couple things to notice there about the linear regression equation and the value of r. Uh, you notice in the equation the slope is negative, negative 0.107, and the correlation coefficient is negative. Those should always go together. A negative slope should go with a negative correlation coefficient. But just kind of think, why would it be negative? What is the context here? So we're talking about the price um, of a used car based on its mileage. Think, well, as mileage goes up, the price should come down, right? So they do the opposite, so we've got the negative relationship. Okay, anyway, that kind of leads us into, uh, into part A. What does X represent? What does Y represent? So if we've got two choices, right? We've got mileage, and we've got on the car, and we've got the price of the car, which should be which? Which should be the explanatory variable? Which should be the response variable? Um, which variable is responding to the other one? Is the price responding to the mileage? Or is the mileage responding to the price? And well, if you think about it that way, it would have to be, oh, it looks like I lost my, uh, my focus there, okay. Uh, it would have to be that X represents mileage and Y represents price. Um, here's why, so X is the explanatory variable, of course, Y the response. The mileage of a car we know. I can look at the odometer. It's the price that we're trying to predict, right? Not the other way around. I don't know the price, and then I try and predict the mileage. I know the mileage, and I predict the price. That makes sense. Um, you know, which one explains the other, right? Does the mileage explain the price? Or does the price explain the mileage? And, he, and you'd say, well, if I, I can change the mileage, right? I can put more miles on my car. I can't, if, and that influences how much it's worth, but I can't change the price and, and then somehow that makes the mileage go down or you know something, right? So um, there you go, okay. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, Part B, uh, which is the correct interpretation of the slope? Okay, so we look back at the equation. Uh, the slope was negative 0.107. So let's think about negative 0.107. Let's think about uh, which of those options it would be. Is it for every $1 increase in price there is a 24,356.15 mile increase in the car mileage. Well, no, we're, we're not even talking about 24,360. That's, that's the, the y-intercept. We're talking about slope. So number one is out. Is it number two? For every one mile increase in the mileage, there is a $0.107 increase in the price. Hmm, okay, uh, well, an increase in the mileage increases price? That doesn't seem likely. Let's read three. For every one mile increase in the mileage, there is a $0.107 decrease in the price, and that's gotta be it right there. Uh, why would that be? We might have been, been able to figure this out on our own uh, without reading through them one at a time. So, you know, if we note 
the slope, think of that as over one, and we know our x and y. So this is, talking about the price, this is the mileage. So for every one mile increase, the price drops by 0 0.107. So that's option number three. Let's go ahead and read four just to finish it off, all the possibilities. For every $1 increase in price, there is a 0 0.107 mile decrease. Well, that's that's got the, the two reverse. So if I increase the price, then the mileage decreases. No, right, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so that's part B. Uh, what is part C? A uh, car's Kelly Blue Book price was $24,000 with 50,000 miles. What is the residual? Ah, okay. Getting at the residual again. So we'll remember our formula for the residual. Always remember it's observed minus predicted. Y minus Y hat. Observed minus predicted. Well, if we read that problem, uh, they tell us the price and they tell us the miles. So it turns out both of those numbers we need to get our observed and our predicted. Also remember the observed is always told to us in the problem. Well, I see two numbers there, $24,000 and I also see 50,000 miles. So you could argue both of those are observed well, which one should we put here for the Y? And then remember, Y represents price. So we should put the 24,000. So the Y here will be the 24,000. How are we gonna get Y hat, the observed? Okay, we're gonna use the 50,000 in the linear regression equation. We're gonna plug uh, X equals 50,000 in to our equation there. So here I have it plugging in 50,000 to the linear regression equation will give me y hat. That is an x value, comes from miles. So I got y hat is 19,006.15. And okay, now we can finish it off. That goes in for y hat. We'll put the 24,000 in there for y, observed minus predicted. And there's my final answer when I subtract 4,993.85 is the residual. Okay. And then one thing, you know, to think about or would be a natural question, um, you might see in the homework, you know, would you want, in this case, if you were buying a, a used car, would you want to see a positive residual or would you want to see a negative residual? I'll think about that for a moment. Remember it's observed minus predicted. This is the number that we predicted based on all the other cars out there. This is what they're actually asking. Do we, what does that positive residual mean? They're asking almost $5,000 more than what we would expect them to. We do not wanna see that. Uh, when we're looking at a car, we. You know, if we'd probably say we, we'd like to see a negative residual. You know, whatever is, is being predicted, this number, if it was below the predicted, you know, then that, then that means we're getting a good deal, right? We're here over $5,000 more than what we'd predict. Now that said, there's, you know, other things going on with this car um, that might make this person ask for more, or maybe they're willing to haggle a little bit because they know they're, they're asking too much, who knows? Yeah. Um, but that's uh, maybe that'd be like a, a point that we could bring up like, hey, you know, uh, we're going to buy that car. You know, I've done some statistics and, you know, I can see this as a positive residual, right? That sort of thing. Let's move on to part D. What percent of this car's value is attributed to its mileage? So this is gonna get at the coefficient of determination and oftentimes, you don't hear that phrase in the question, but we know that's what they're talking about. Because it says, what percent of this car's value is attributed to its mileage? When we see the percent, that's gotta be the coefficient of determination. That, that's the percentage. 
Uh, so let's go for it. Uh, we're going to need that uh, coefficient, the correlation coefficient, little r. Well, it looks like I've got that on the next page. Here's our formula. So we're going to need that value of little r. Well, they gave that, pro they provided that to us. So we can just grab that capital R squared equals, be sure to use parentheses here, negative 0.679 squared. Multiply that by 100. And I found it to be 46.104%. So that is the percentage of the car's value that is only determined by the mileage. You're like, oh, 46%. Well, that's, that's not all that high at all. Where would that rank uh, as fair, kind of in the middle? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know, I mean, this is the majority, um, you know, get close to 50% of that car's value is determined just by its mileage. That makes sense. The newer the car, the more it costs. Um, but there's certainly a lot of other factors involved in determining the price of a car, although mileage is probably um, a really, really big one. So for over 46%. So maybe if you're trying to buy that car, you know, this the person selling it come back and say, well, yeah, but, you know, the coefficient of determination is only 46%. There's other things, right? Okay. Uh, let's get to our final practice problem, number seven. And this is, well, we'll see what you guys think. Um, I'll read it at a nearby university. A correlation between entrance exam grades and overall scholastic achievement was found to be negative 1.58. On this basis, what would you tell the university? Okay, so you're brought in, um, you know, as an expert analyst, and they say, well, this is what we found, so what, what can we conclude? So let's just think about it before we look at uh, uh, the, the possible answers. Entrance exam grades and overall scholastic achievement. Yeah, it seems like there'd be a maybe a connection between those. If you maybe if you score well on this entrance exam, then you have you're, you're more likely to have good overall scholastic achievement. Um, but then they found the correlation to be negative 1.58. The correlation was negative. What does that mean? So, choice number one: the entrance exam is a good predictor of success like uh, I'm not sure about that um, that's that just seems kind of too vague I, mean, uh, I don't know uh, let's let's keep reading number two students who do best on this exam will actually become the worst students now that does make sense because we have a negative correlation in, in you know from one angle um, although it doesn't seem likely Students who do best on this exam actually become the worst students. Well, that, 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 at least that fits a negative relationship. Is it number three? The exam is a poor predictor of success. It's like the opposite of choice one. Like, uh, again, yeah, kind of vague, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, number four, they should hire a new statistician. So it turns out the answer is number four why is the answer number four well I don't know if you caught it early on uh, but that uh, that correlation negative 1.58 that is the correlation coefficient little r um, and little r must always fall between negative one and positive one it doesn't stray outside of those boundaries so negative 1.58 um, I think they should hire somebody else to do their research Okay, that um, pretty much wraps it up. There is one last uh, page of cautions on the linear regression. So I'll ask you to read those. Um, there's kind of some examples for each. Um, actually, go ahead and, you know, um, let's see. I'll, I'll read that, uh, that first one just as I'm looking at it here. Uh, two last things to look at, uh, to look out for when making predictions using a linear regression equation. So uh, the first one, number one, 
Uh, it's known as extrapolation. What is extrapolation? Attempting to predict values outside of the range of data points. Okay, so if you think back, um, you know, maybe to our college burglary data, what if we were to make a prediction for a college that had only, say, 5,000 students, something, 5,000? There's plenty of some very small colleges that might have that. Well, the smallest bit of data we had for those college burglaries, if you look for the lowest enrollment, I think it was, I'm looking back at it, 27,000 was the smallest college in that group of data. So if we wanted to make a prediction about a college with 5,000 students, I don't know if that data would be the best, would be the most reliable, because a college with 5,000 students is just going to have a whole different dynamic than colleges with 30, 40, 50,000 students. Right? College with 5,000, probably nobody lives on campus. They probably all live you know, at their apartments or, or at home, whatever. Um, so that's just going to be a whole different. So that's just not, that data is not going to predict um, a college that goes outside of that range very well. Or if you had a, a college that was huge, right, 100,000 students, you know, which would probably be like a, just a fully online college. Um, that data is not going to be very a very good predictor. So again, we call that extrapolation. I'll let you read the little cartoon if you like. And then number two down there at the bottom, uh, be attentive to groupings that may appear in your scatter plot. This especially applies if you're doing this for your final project. If you get groupings, you may need to look at each group on its own and calculate data and the linear regression equation for each group of data separately versus all together. So you see uh, just that picture there. Uh, that represents the world record times for the 10 kilometer run uh, going back to 1910, 1910 to 2004. And you see these, you know, you see these two groups of data Right, there's this kind of this line that's formed by the data toward the bottom, and then somewhere around, you know, 19, what year is that? Somewhere around 1965, 1970, uh, this other data comes in and it seems to follow its own line up above. And so that blue line, that blue line is uh, the linear regression equation for all of the data considered together. I think that blue line is not predicting anything. Um, it's, it's nowhere close to either group. It's like the average of the groups. So we would not want to go about it that way. We'd want to get a linear regression equation for each group separately. Um, and if you think about it, what do those two groupings probably represent? If we're talking about world record times for the 10K, um, then what's going on? The, the lower line represents the men's world record and the upper line represents the women's world record. Um, so we probably don't want to put those all together. We probably want to study them separately. Okay, good luck in the homework, and I will see you guys in the live meeting.